All right, so three, two, one. Yo, yo, it's your boy Timothy Glean. I'm coming at you with another one of these videos, and just so glad. First and foremost, I just want to just put this out here. I'm just glad for the the support that I've been getting. I know some of us we look at the views of our videos and how many people are viewing our videos, and you know, once it's a small amount of people, I feel like people don't give you know thanks or credit to the viewers of their videos until it's in the thousands. And I just want to tell you that the very few that watches my content, um, I thank you. Um, I appreciate you. This is personal, you know, so it may be five to ten faithful people that really listens to my stuff on a consistent basis. Um, you know, and I got 195 subscribers at this moment, you know, so I know that many of you chime in when you can, but I know some topics may not fit certain things from my old subscribers that used to be subscribed to me I've doubled in subscriber count so this is all um, people that have been attracted to the content that I've been releasing since becoming a Christian and I have people half of my subscribers are half people when I was in the world so I just hope that all this can be a testimony you know for those that are Christians and that aren't Christians and that these topics can really you know, galvanize you in a way. Um, Cause I'm speaking about a whole bunch of stuff and it ain't stopping. Um, and I'm just gonna keep on moving in this what I'm flowing in and just keep on just talking about these topics. But if you like what I'm talking about, you know, and you may stumble across some of my videos, just subscribe, you know, and just, you know, hit the notification bell and you'll be able to be notified on when I release stuff. But also, you know, like. You know, even if you don't subscribe, like, you know, maybe you have something you want to say, comment, you know, and things like that. You know, it, it, it goes a long way. But regardless, I'm thankful for those that watch these videos. Just know that the effort that you put in, it, it really gets the stuff out there more. And I believe this stuff can really help people. But regardless of that, I really want to get into this topic. And this is a new topic um, that I want to speak about. Um, so to piggyback off of that last video, I really want to speak more deeply and focus and own in on, you know, singleness. Um, I know that last topic was predominantly for women, but it could be for men as well. And this can go on along the lines of that. And be single. And just looking at this paper, I wrote down don't chase women and then under that I said enjoy your singleness <laughs> and um you know use your singleness smart as well you know when I say enjoy your singleness that doesn't mean like or what I'm mentioning you just sleep with a whole bunch of people you know while you're not committed to somebody because you're ruining, you know, somebody good for you when you're sleeping with multiple, multiple people, you know, just because now if you if that ain't what you want, whatever, you know, live your life. But I'm just saying this is for anybody who desires to be married, you know, and you out here entertaining all these women or all these men, you're not going to attract somebody that's of substance from the opposite sex. You're repelling. And this is something that a lot of people don't get. They think they can have their cake and eat it too, you know. But this is why you see a lot of people single, you know, and, and forever, you know, and maybe desire children. And they may get the children, but they don't have the life partner with that, that comes with that. And um, I believe it's important and I advocate for marriage. I advocate for nuclear families and us being nuclear families again. Um, especially in the brown community where it seems like we got it the worst as far as the culture that we picked up and how we've been conditioned to hate one another men and women alike and we're not being families this is why we see so many single parent households you know we don't take our time in getting to know people we don't allow ourselves to vet people or court people like we used to we don't allow ourselves to get married you know, because of the culture, as I said. 
And when you're dealing with lots and lots of different people, you know, it, it, it takes away from that moment. So when you come across a wholesome man, but you're in the middle of doing what you're doing, you know, or if you're, you're in the, you find a wholesome woman, but you're in the middle of doing what you're doing with these women, you know, so vice versa, it can be flip switched. Most likely you're going to include them in the group of people that you're already dealing with physically. And when you do that, this is when you start to pick apart certain things and comparing and contrasting. You know, and this is why I feel like when I say enjoy your singleness, I mean enjoy your life without the worry of sleeping with people. Like, get to know who you are. Once you're sleeping with people, that's a soul tie. Once you're sleeping with people, allowing yourself to go inside somebody or somebody to go inside you in, in, in that way, like, once you're in that place, you're... You're bringing whatever, like, you have on you into their lives and vice versa. So if you slept with 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 people, all 50 of those people, something about them is on you. And you have to break yourself from those soul ties. You have to release yourself from those soul ties. You don't even have to necessarily sleep with somebody to create a soul tie. But on, on the highest caliber of soul ties to physically be with somebody. So when I say enjoy your singleness, you're not enjoying your singleness. When you're becoming one with these people, you're not even single. Of course, you're single as far as like, you can even be in a relationship. And legally, if you're not married to somebody, you're, you're considered single. So on paper, you'd be single. But if you're sleeping around, you're not single. You know, you have created that tie with somebody. You want to release all those ties. So when you come into somebody's life, you're going to come in a life in a healthy way. And... I feel like a lot of men's issues, um, in a sense, you know, when, excuse me, a lot of men's issues is a lot would chase women. And I don't mean pursue. I believe pursuing a woman, pursuing a woman with the intent on marriage is a whole different level. But when you're chasing women, that chase is taking you away from making money, from improving your life, from exercising, from working on your business, even your job or whatever work life you have. That stuff takes away. So once again, like I said, don't chase women. And um, there's women out here chasing men as well. You know, you don't want to chase nobody. And me, I'm coming from a Christian perspective. And if I were to come from a Christian perspective as a woman, you should allow a man to pursue you. But you should be intentional in that pursuit because you have to meet somebody halfway um, to let a man know that, okay, I invite this pursuit. With, if you're reading the story of Ruth, Ruth didn't play hard to get with Boaz. And Boaz was an honorable man. He was known in the city gates. He, he, he was, you know, he was known to be an honorable man. He had integrity. He had a good reputation. And he was known all in the land that, I yo, Boaz, that boy. You know, Ruth, come up. You know, super, 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 super Proverbs 31 woman. You know, just her mindset of servitude and just, you know, how uh, she wasn't like a lot of the other women. She was very uh, kind, feminine. Um, what's another word? Uh, modest. And I don't just mean modest in dress. Women all dress modest, even the prostitutes in the olden days dress modest. But she was modest in her conduct and how she carried herself. And her herself still put it out there like hey like I want to be pursued by you and you're somebody that I have interest in I notice a good man here and I have interest in you and I'm going to give you the signs of that do you think if Ruth was sleeping with 10 different people in the same month you think that she's going to even oh Boaz like she's not going to look at Boaz as no she going to Boaz gonna sense that, like, nah, I, I heard about her getting through the town, you know, uh, 
You know, because and that's why I say in your singleness, you should want to be celibate. And um and in your singleness, you should want to focus on you. And when I say this, I speak specifically to men even more than women. Because of what I believe, you know, I believe that a woman should be celibate and single and putting herself in position to receive her husband. Um, and things like that. But that's all in positioning of the woman and putting the cues out there for somebody that's pursuing her. But as far as a man goes, and when I look at the, the biblical role of a man, a provider, protector, you know, leader, you know, the one that teaches, you know, you know, even the wife, the word, the word and all. It's so many aspects of a man, I feel like, that needs to be worked on and chiseled. And that's going to happen in your singleness. Because once you're married to somebody, dealing with children and stuff like that, you're not going to have the time that you have in your single seasons as a man. You know, so what are you doing to establish, you know, whatever you got going on? What type of legacy do you plan on having? Do you plan on having children? And if you plan on having children, what steps are you taking towards that? And what type of woman do you want to have children with? You know, these are things a lot of men don't think about. You know, once you're in lust and you just, you just shooting your seed and whoever. And bam, now you got baby mama drama. Now you got child support. Now you got abuse in front of your children. You got the person that had the children pushing you away from the children. You got women that have abusive men around them. You know, and now that's hurting your children. So it's, it, it's so many different dynamics, you know, and especially like, oh, look at that. So I'm trying to attack me over here. But um, this is why I say to man, especially man, like you have to be intentional about everything. Like what type of work you gonna do, you know, and, and what type of time you gonna put into that. What dreams do you have and what are some tangible goals that you can write out or put out that that, that can help you chase those dreams or, or whatever it may be? What is God calling you to be? What is God calling you to do? And, and, and we all have a purpose in this life and it goes beyond marriage. But when you look at your purpose and, and, and being in purpose and being in your destiny and once you look at these certain aspects and I'm not saying this in no prosperity way I'm saying this in a real way where every man has a purpose every woman has a purpose and it and is deeper than making babies and working and getting a job and, and raising children it's something deeper than that that God has purposes us for and and God gives us giftings and and talents and abilities and and, and and skill sets you know that we should be utilizing for his kingdom ultimately and once you win that purpose ultimately somebody gonna come along you know but I feel like for a lot of people they already met somebody that was good for them and they messed it up you know, but when I say, man, stop chasing. And if you see somebody that has qualities, and when, like, when you know what you want as a man, because that's, that's all it takes. Like, we, we, we live in a culture where they effeminize men and make them not sure what type of woman they want, you know? And then you... You get dominating, domineering women, you know, to run your life. And you realize you're not happy. And you marry them. And then eventually get divorced and they take everything from you. And bam, they get to continue living their life. Never loved you at all. And you love them. Now you're heartbroken, messed up. And now you're on this, you know, uh, red pill community. You know, just hating women on the internet. And going along with the comments and stuff like that. And... And I'm not saying a lot of even red pill guys and things like that um, hate women because there's a lot of guys that have actually have great intention in the content that they put out and really just want to educate men on how many women are and educate women as well, you know, just on other women and even on a lot of these men because a lot of these men will hold other beta males accountable, you know, so it's... It, it is accountability on both ends, I feel like, just in a lot of content. This is why I want to bring these things to you from a Christian man's perspective. In a real way where you can receive. And like I said, if I'm, if I'm giving you this perspective from my perspective, be single. Don't sleep with nobody. And focus. What, what? And let me just give you the number one secret. It's semen retention. For man, it's semen retention. 
It ain't just celibacy and not sleeping with. No, it's retaining your seed. And let me tell you, I got a testimony, but I haven't been counting days. Uh, but I know it's been over 100 days, probably over 120, 30. I don't know. You know, I haven't been counting. I just been just, I just felt level ups in life like since really starting this journey last year. And even though I relapsed a couple times and this and that, like this time is a bit different. It's um. I feel strong, I feel confident, you know, I feel like I can tackle the world, I'm not afraid of nothing, um, you know, and of course I, I deal with uh, little plateaus and energy and stuff like that, they call them flat lines, you know, so I'm, I'm extremely tired sometimes or a lot of times, you know, but I do my best to get work done and, 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 and do what I need to. Um, it's not easy being a single father, you know, working. You know, it just, it's different for a man to do this, you know. So I'm in a rare position for men, where a lot of men are in. Whereas a lot of you men aren't parents at all, or you're not necessarily, you're a single parent as far as like, you, you, you have children and you're not with somebody or married to somebody, but you may not have sole or full custody of your children. You may have visitation. You should be grinding. You should be working. If you ain't got children, uh, nothing holding you back. Yeah, if you ain't got your, nothing holding you back. If you single and you got no children at all, like, I wish I, not to say I wish I knew this because I love my three children, but they're a liability. God has used them to help me with many lessons, but in many cases, they they not helping me. I'm raising them. And I'll raise them to be a light to this earth, so that's a blessing in itself. You know, but if you don't have children, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have children before you're even ready. You know, but don't ever regret your children if you already got them. Remember that, but you never want to do something that you may regret. And you never want to do something with a woman you may regret. Because you don't necessarily have to regret the children, but regret the woman. And if you regret the woman, then you regret the children in a way. This is why I had to get away from that mindset and forgive and just say, like, I don't regret nothing. I made these decisions. I'm fully accountable. I'm not going to play no victim. You know, I'm not going to play like, oh, this and that and this. And I'm not going to cry on this internet for you. I've been through some stuff where, you know, some people may cry from hearing my story. But regardless of that, like, nah. Even with my three children, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Because I'm an independent man. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna be honest. I think we all know the scripture uh, when Adam was alone and God looked at him and said, "Man, it ain't good for man to be alone. He need to help me." You know, and that's it's nothing further from the truth. But I'm learning now to really just enjoy my singleness. I do believe like God has a spouse for me, a wife for me. Um, it's in my heart to be married. This is why, like, and God put put this innate desire in people, you know, and I desire marriage. I've read lots of marriage books. I've studied many marriages, listened to marriage testimonies, and I got all this knowledge on marriage. And the underlying thing that I learned from all this marriage is to just be in your purpose and do you. You know, when, when you're seeking the kingdom and his righteousness, like, all things will be added. Once you think of that simple concept, like, all doubt will go out the window about a spouse, about anything. But you get that spouse in your singleness. You're not going to meet your spouse while you're married. You're not going to meet your spouse while you have a girlfriend or boyfriend. You're not going to meet your spouse who's sleeping around with this and that. You're not going to meet your spouse not being in your purpose or destiny or in God's will. Well, you know, and ultimately, even if you don't know God, there's many people that are in God's will. There's many people that know God that tries to go against God's will and do things in their own power. Now that's different if you're aware of God. Now I'm speaking to individuals specifically that are aware of God. And, and know that there's issues, that there's sin, that there's things that you have to be delivered from. Things that you, before you even prepare or even before God is able to release that person to you. Or before God is able to awake that desire in that person. But regardless... You know, just in your singleness, be single. Enjoy your singleness. You don't have to sleep with lots of people to enjoy your singleness. You know, like, 
you got a group of friends, and I don't mean thought friends. You know, I I I I, I released some videos. Some people like you got to cut off. You know, if you if you want to live a certain life. Um. And I don't mean cut off in like some vindictive way, you know, and just. In a, in, a, in a nasty way And I'm not saying be nasty towards people You know, everybody deserves God's grace And God can use us to extend grace to others To tell people about the Most High Teach them about God's ways And to tell people about Jesus You know, that died for our sins You know, ultimately so let, me look, let me look at this paper one more time Yeah Don't chase women Enjoy your singleness. Utilize your singleness. So meaning, if you're a man, leave all women alone. If you're a young, young man, 18, just got out of high school, work. Save your money. Diapers cost money. Children cost money. Even dealing with certain type of women cost money. Forget all, save. Plan. Get into a trade or something. If you got debt, you know, take care of that debt. If you behind, take care of that stuff. If you got a goal, write out a plan for that goal and do it. If you want to start a business, just start it. Research how to start it. Google how to start a business. That ain't tough. Research things. Get around like-minded people or people that's going towards the same trajectory as you. And, and, and push forward But you gotta use your singleness in a smart way Cause you can be single and just waste your time with everybody and everything I said I was single and I was Doing this and that and I'm hanging out with I got like Ten different circles of people I was hanging out with when I was single before I had my children Wasting money and time Getting blackout drunk and I'm just for what? To wake up the next day and not even remember what I did? Three hundred dollars less? Two, three hundred dollars less? Knowing I could have invested that. And in those moments, if like, cause I, my head was in the clouds, if I didn't know about Bitcoin, I'd probably be a millionaire right now. <laughs> if I invested all that money <laughs> that I wasted back in that time into Bitcoin and how, how cheap it was at that point. If I, man, what? I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> but you know like because I wasn't around certain people certain you know with like minds or even mentors or people that you know thought on a higher level than me people with more wisdom and knowledge than me since since I wasn't around that I will I, I didn't have the expertise I believe that I you know that I that I have now you know so I'm just looking at my life now and just being like wow like God has blessed me with mentors you know, God has blessed me with, you know, people that can help me along this ride. I have, God has blessed me with the resources that I have. And that, that, was, that was all because of the time that I took in my singleness. In these three years, like, I counted it. It was like, um, at this point, what is it? Today is Saturday, so let's see, 1,220. 1,232 days since I've been celibate. And I counted this last week when I was recording a video and I just translated it to a week later. So, 1,232 days I have been celibate. Man, God has rewarded me for holding myself back, you know, because it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it to deal with all these women. It ain't worth it for a woman to deal with all these men. Because there's actually good men and women out here that has good intentions for you. You know, everybody in out here like seeking your soul and, and trying to, but most people are operating off of lust. So they're gonna wanna sleep with you before they marry you. So if you're like, I'm gonna wait till marriage, you don't even know how much time you save yourself off of that. You're not gonna waste time. You're gonna be on a couple dates with somebody and realize, wow, they actually just want to waste my time, you know? Because it's either like we, we work it towards marriage or I'm wasting my time. That's why I don't, I don't want no friend of the opposite sex. I don't want no opposite sex friend or best friend. 
If she's my best friend, she's my wife. And that's that, man. But ultimately, if I don't have no wife, I'm single. And if I'm single, I'm not sleeping with nobody. I'm focused. I'm grinding. I got three children of my own already that I got to focus on. And when I'm married, because of what I put into my children, they not going to get in the way of my marriage, you know? They not going to come in the middle or... Because I'm not going to be that type of man to put my children before a woman, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, not a woman, but my wife, you know? Like, of course, my children come before any person in this world, you know? But once I have a wife, my wife in the, in the flesh is the highest priority. That relationship is the highest relationship in, in the natural, in the flesh. Because, of course, it's God, Son, Jesus, you know? But besides that, it would be my wife. I don't have no wife. So what am I doing? I'm focused. I'm grinding. I'm in my purpose. I'm operating in my gifts and what God has gifted me with, the resources that God has blessed me with. I'm going to utilize those to extend his kingdom, to glorify his name, to give him glory. And I haven't done so, like, so much, but I'm, I'm doing it more. And, uh, you know, I just hope that a lot of this stuff that I'm speaking to you really speaks life into you, especially as a man. Men needs to hear this, you know, as far as in your singleness, enjoy it. You know, you want to take a trip, take a trip. Enjoy yourself, you know, because once you start having children and have a family, your life is down the drain. And not to say it like that, because I don't feel like my life is down the drain, but I don't have the freedoms that people have. Because if so, I wouldn't be living in this house that I'm living in. I would definitely move into a studio apartment if I didn't have children and I'll be saving up as much money as possible to establish myself, to prepare myself for that legacy, to prepare myself for it. Since I had children in the midst of having nothing, now I gotta build from nothing, you know? And I never wanna raise my children up to build from nothing. I never wanna, you know, and not to say they're gonna have a silver spoon in their mouth or anything like that, but I want them to learn, you know, that these principles that I'm learning from God, I want them to learn these same principles, you know, and implement them in their lives a lot sooner than being a 28-year-old implementing this stuff in your life, you know, and I'm 31 now, you know, so it's all been a blessing, you know, but in many ways, you know, I don't want to speak curses over my life, but I looked at this as a curse. I looked at this as, you know, this is my chastisement, you know, being a single father and being with my children every day, you know, but ultimately God turns everything around for the greater good of those that love him, you know, and just everything. And I kind of like, we know all things work out for the greater good of those that love him, you know, and these things should conform us, you know, to the image of his son. You know, and that's, that's something that's real, uh, something very concrete in my life. And Romans 8, 28, been one of my favorite Bible verses ever because of that and I just look at my life and since I have such a self-awareness I can go through my throughout my entire life from baby up into now and just be like wow God look at how you led me you know I don't know the future I don't know what's to come you know but I do know that God is great I'm gonna continue to be single um, when God reveals whatever he reveals in the divine time and that he reveals it um, and that time where I'm prepared and he reveals it to that other woman, whoever she is. Um, and not that other woman, but the woman is just meant to be my wife and whoever she is, wherever she may be. And he's going to stir it up in her. He's going to stir it up in me. And we're going to be like, wow, like this is what God did or this is what God is doing or, and things like that. But right now I'm single. I'm not worried about it. I'm still healing in a sense. I'm still, you know overcoming and i just thank god for it god is so good but you know regardless i don't know where we at oh another long one no nah, this i think this one i think these first two initial videos had to be this long i don't want all my videos to be this long you know because it's kind of just getting like I don't want it to be like i'm just sitting up here just talking to you and just but at the same time i want it to be real I want it to be off the top of my head and just my thoughts on this topic right now. 
and I had many thoughts on this topic. Uh, it feels better and better the more the, of the stuff that I get off my chest. So um, I got so many more thoughts, so many more feelings, you know, things like that. Um, of course, I'm not going to necessarily express everything that I feel to y'all. Um, but just a big gist of a lot of the stuff that I've already put out there. And I'm going to put it in a way which is more holy, <laughs> more righteous, you know, less contentious. I'm not trying to start any fights the way that I was on Facebook before with a lot of my ideas. But, you know, these are truths that I feel like anybody can pick up. But one more time, I'll say to the man and the women that are watching this well, there's not that many women watching my stuff but nonetheless there's still women watching this stuff so i'm speaking to you as well be single and celibate if you want a husband if you want a wife be single and celibate and that don't mean be single celibate and wait on somebody no be single celibate and enjoy your life and being the purpose, like you gonna figure all that stuff out once you stop sleeping with all them people or stop focusing and hanging out with all them people. You gonna see clearly what God wants you to do. You know? Eventually, my job is to extend the kingdom. You know, and the best way that I possibly can. So like I said, I'm gonna tell you about Jesus in the midst of all this because ultimately he's died for us. He's given up his life for us. And as man, you know, and if you're a Christian man, you know, Jesus should be the head. You know, when we say the head, the head of our lives, just ask the Most High God, Heavenly Father was the head of Christ. And Christ was obedient to him until the point of death. You know, and I feel like we should have that same sort of mindset. That's why it's important to have the mind of Christ. And, you know, so I'm striving, you know, I'm... I'm not gonna sit here and say like I'm just like hmm super duper holy holy man holy man with a super cape and I'm just flying through holy man and just uh, you go to hell you go in hell no I'm not doing none of that you know like without the sacrifice of Jesus Christ we all be going to hell with gasoline kerosene and, and sulfur you know but glory to God for deliverance glory to God for you know just his promises and his word, glory to God for just breaking yokes of bondage, you know, breaking the soul ties, breaking the old evil wicked habits that I was in, the, the mindset and philosophies that I was following, and just a lot of things like God has broken off of my life, a lot of people, negative people that God has sliced out of my life. You know, when God has broken me down and humbled me and just stripped everything from me, everything where I had nothing and I didn't know what to do to even pay the bills in this house. And I you know, just got three children here, custody of them out of work for two years, like no idea, but just trusting in God this whole time and God has sustained me. God has got me through. It's been days in the beginning of having custody of my children, crying, snot in my nose. Dealing with uh, just, just wicked lawyers and justice system and not having my voice heard. So it, it, it's been lots of pains and hurts and hurdles. And this has just been the past three years since walking with God. You know, uh, I've dealt with a lot in my life. You know, and it may not have been as like big giant things like other people like cancer, you know, and just like just other sicknesses and things like that you know but I've dealt with some things mentally that is specifically catered to me that's been difficult and God has got me through it all and God has built me up and made me a strong man and trust and believe like not to say your life will be the same as mine but I'm just saying take that step and just to be celibate and focus on you get healing breaking away from those soul ties and watch how God just adds on to your life the more you give your life to God and the more you accept Jesus the more in this world you will lose but you'll gain so much spiritually and if you seek in his kingdom and righteousness you're gonna gain all that back and then some if you look at the story of Job Job lost everything but got it all back and then some tenfold twentyfold thirtyfold he's been blessed tremendously because no matter how hard it was after he lost everything he didn't lose his faith in God. 
Yeah, he questioned God, he murmured God, you know, spoke against God and things like that and just didn't understand. And God got given him insight and understanding of his trials, why he went through what he went through, you know, and the enemy will be used in a way to test us, you know, and it's just like, and as man, you got to have the right mindset. And when you have the right mindset, God will bless you with everything. And I'm not just trying to just say like, go to God as God ain't no genie. God gonna bless you with the spiritual, you know, blessings. God gonna bless you with more patience. God gonna bless you to have joy in these moments. God gonna bless you with self-control. God gonna deliver you from sin. <laughs> you know, like, so we can we talk about all this stuff. Like, all that other stuff come with just being obedient. But it ain't about doing things for God for things. It's about doing things for God because God created us. You know, so ultimately, just as a man, you know, be strong. Just as King David says, show yourself a man to Solomon. Show yourself a man. And watch what happens when you stand boldly as a man and do what a man does. And men of the world get this concept, you know. I want to see more Christian men get this concept. Without being trampled over and walked over and being controlled by manipulation tactics and witchcraft. You know, and, and political correctness, and, and, and be a man. You don't have to worship no women. You don't have to worship these celebrities. You don't have to work. To just be single, and focus on you and what you need to do. I trust and believe God gonna bless you with a wife that you'll be able to raise children with. That you'll be able to somebody that's gonna help you. You know, but regardless. That's up to you. You know, yeah, I didn't come here with statistics or anything. You know, I, it's like I said, this is testimonial. But regardless, um, once again, you know, I just pray that you, you know, are blessed from this message. Uh, I just pray blessings in your life, you know, and things like that. Um, you know, I pray that whatever you've been praying about, according to God's will. That those prayers be answered. You know, and you know, I I pray nothing but good for you. I pray for prosperity in the spirit over your life and just prosperity in the natural to be able to take care of the basic needs that you need, you know, and just for you to have just a joyful, grateful heart, you know, just for what God provides to you. For the simple fact you got somewhere to sleep and lay down. And, you know, you, you got food in your fridge and, you know, you got beds to sleep on. You know, you may not have it all, you know, but you may have family. And you, you know, you may have loved ones that care for you. You may have people in your corner that support you. You know, I, it's, it's the simple, you may just have a car. You know, like, just to be able to drive where you need to. Where it takes you 10 minutes to drive, where it takes people an hour and a half to two hours to get to a 20 minute destination if you just drove, you know? So, it's, we, it's all about perspective when you look at who's blessed and who's not, but just appreciate what God has blessed you with at this current moment. You know, so, once again, just thank you for watching this. Um, if you enjoy this content, Went on, just like, subscribe, and um, hit the notification bell on the videos, and you'll be notified. And yeah, but regardless of that, you know, uh, once again, blessings to you. In Jesus' name, thank you, and have a great one.